but they give me, you know, what a lot of people write in the loop invariant. Well, that's that's true. The loop invariant, that's the loop invariant, but it doesn't tell me what's wrong or right with the sentence. All right, so the first sentence was, we proved that the choices made by the algorithm are consistent, optimal, and valid. No. It's not the choices made by the algorithm that that we're we're doing. It's it's uh, you know we have the the fairy godmother's holding something. We told her to change it, and now we have to prove that thing is right. And the second one is uh, an algorithm solution is optimal so far. Well, an algorithm doesn't have a solution yet. It it has has a partial solution, and we don't know whether a partial solution is optimal or not. Uh, the last one is a little trickier, not too many people have noticed what's wrong with this one. It says, the prover compares the fairy godmother's solution with the algorithms, what the algorithm has done. Well, the prover can't see it, right? So, I think I've had two people say that so far. So anyway, maybe the rest will be great. <laughs> maybe I, th you know, I thought there were gonna, those were going to be giveaway marks, but... Uh, any questions about anything else? Okay, we're doing uh, we're doing dynamic programming. All right. Um, this is another classic problem. Maybe we can find the. Anybody see a, a mouse? It's right in the middle. It, the top oh, it is there, but it's not moving. Have to, to wakes it up. You have to. You have to threaten it. <laughs> to say you better be good, or I will turn you off. All right. So this is a classic problem. You're given two strings. All right. Maybe these are DNA sequences, and uh, they're you know they're in a particular order. And a substring is a is a subsequence, right? It's a subset of the letters. Um, and uh, in, the, in, in the same order. And then here is this, another subsequence, and you note they're the same. It's a common subsequence, and our goal is to find the longest common subsequence. Do I get the problem? All right, so what's the input? As I say, the input's two strings. A solution is a common subsequence, right? Here, this is why it's a common subsequence. And the cost of a solution is its length, and our goal is to find a, a long one. Um, so here's two examples. I, th I think I uh, got that from... from uh, see, I, I get some things from James. I think I got that one from James. All right, so here, uh, um, you know, we have a particular instance, and we know we're going to have to try a bunch of things, and we, we think about what we're trying is by we ask the, the bird a question. So what questions should we ask the, the you know, she's holding uh, an optimal solution, what do we ask her about it? We actually did this, or somewhat did this already. Right, she's, she's has a solution, what should we ask her? Hmm? She has which character? Um, the one that the last one. Are we going backwards or? Yeah, usually we ask about something at the end of the solution. Right. So, right? Any no 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 guesses here? Yeah, we. Right, we could ask her what's the last character in Z. Uh, we could ask, is the last character, uh, right, right? I mean, I guess we did that, you know, when we said, what's the last edge? We could say, what's the last character in Z? And we could ask, you know, is the last, is, you know, we look at these last characters and we say, are they in the solution? Right, so what, what might she answer if I ask, look at this A and D, are they in the solution? What are her various answers, right? She could say, the last of x is not included, or the last of y is not included, the last of x is included, is included, neither included, both are included. Right? These are the sort of things she could say. Right? Everybody with me here? 
All right, so suppose she says the last of x is not as included, right? This a here is not in the solution. We need to now ask the friend a question. We need to give the friend a subinstance. What should we ask, what subinstance should we give the friend? I just want to ask, when you say the last of x is not included, does that imply that the last one is included? No. All that's included, all that's implied is the last of x is not included. So what should we give the, the friend? You, you can ask the friend, you know, somebody tells you, hey, we want to learn this common sense sequence, but let me give you a hint, the a is not in it. Now you ask your friend something, what should you ask your friend? Exactly, you throw away the a and you give the friend the rest. And what does the friend give you? Gives you the longest common subsequence. And what's your answer? The same. Right? Everybody got that? Your answer is the same. All right. What happens if she says the last of y is not included? Well, it's the same sort of deal. Right? Everybody got that? What happens if she says uh, um, that both of them are included? So what do we send our friend? Everything except the last one. Everything except the D's, yeah. right? All right, so we remove the D's, we ask the friend, the friend gives us the best answer, and then what's our answer? That plus the plus D. That plus the D, right? Good. What happens if she says both are included? She's wrong, right? She's wrong. Everybody see that? How can both A and D be part of a common subsequence? Right? Everybody get that? She's wrong. Uh, so you just you be polite to the poor, poor bird. All right. What happens if she says the last of X is included? Right? She says this, this A has to be in there. Right, right. We have to, right, what do we give our friend? Well, if you gave our friend this, right, and then your friend gives you an answer, now what's your answer going to be? Right, you're going to just add the A back on? Right, but, but that's wrong. Right, because it's not uh, um, A, B, C, D, A, in fact, isn't even uh, isn't a subsequence of this bottom guy. Right? See that? So, um, what do we do instead? Yeah, if, if we're going to take this A, then it's going to match with something. So we look for the first A, and uh, we give we give the T W T uh, R whatever that is those three letters down here, right? To to the to the friend. Now, when the friend gives you an answer, you can actually tack the A back on, right? Does that make sense? Because here they give you an answer to this part. And when you're, you're tacking this A on and this A on to get the A back. Does that make sense? All right. So we basically tried all of these, but sometimes it's useful to, to have fewer bird answers, right? Because the more bird answers you have, the more code you need, and sometimes they're, they're redundant. And uh, you don't, all you have, to, the, in the list of bird answers that you include, what you need is that she can always give a right answer, right? It doesn't, she doesn't have to have all of this list. Can you see anyone here that we could, for example, delete? Which, the last one here, both are included? Why can we delete the last one? Suppose this was true. Suppose both were included. The last, you know, the last letters were included. What, what would also be true? Last of X and last of Y. 
right? This would also be true, and this would also be true, right? So, um, so actually, let's keep these ones, right? Which ones had short code, right? This one had nice short code, this had short code, and this one had pretty good code. Um, so, what about this one? The last of x is included. Do we need this one? Well, either, suppose the last of x is included. Either the last of y is not included, or they're both included. See that? So we don't need this one because she could answer this one or this one. And, and so we can eliminate it. What about this one? In fact, th remember, this was the one that we didn't really like because you, you had to back up. Right? So we didn't really like that one anyway. And similarly, we don't like that one, so we can get rid of it. What about neither included? Well, she could say, if neither included, she could say the, X is not, the last of X is not included or the last of Y is not included, right? So we can eliminate that one. And uh, so now we have a, a smaller list. How many bird answers are there? We only have three. Right? So um, if we ran this algorithm, we try all the three bird answers, and our friend tries the three, and the friend tries the three. How many? What's the running time of this recursive backtracking algorithm? If I have three friends, and they have three friends, and they have three friends, and they have three friends, what's the problem happening here? Exponential. Exponential, right? You're going to be trying all solutions. And let me give you a hint. This is going to be the answer every time I ask this question. <laughs> all right? So we need to narrow down what is the set of sub instances. You know, we need to make sure you don't repeat the same sub instances. So we want to figure out what the complete set of sub instances is. Um, suppose that we have this uh, input. That's our instance. We have to think, what is the instance of our friends and our friends' friends and our friends' 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 friends, right? So you, you imagine running the recursive backtracking on it and you determine the complete set of sub-instances, right? So for example, is, is this a sub-instance? Right, what do we got? We got, we got these letters and then we got these letters. Is that a sub-instance? Is so that some friend going to have to solve this? Yeah, why? Because the bird said get rid of that, and then the bird says get rid of that, and then the bird says get rid of that, and then the bird says get rid of that, right? We keep going, and then uh, there it is, right? So I have a friend, friend, friend who's going to have to deal with this. All right, what about this guy, right? Here we have these letters, and uh, <laughs> down here we have those letters. Are, those, are they going to ever arise? No, why not? Because we're taking stuff in the front. So we only drop other stuff in the front. We only delete from this end, so they're going to be prefixes. Right? What about, uh, what about this? You take the first I letters of X and the first J letters of Y. Right? For some I and J. Right? That's what we're going for here. Right? It's for, for every length of, uh, uh, you know, for every i between 0 and the length of x and every j between the, right, how many sub instances do we have here? The length of x times the length of y, right? All right, so we need to prove, so that we guess this set of sub instances and we want to make sure it has the right properties, right? The first property is that it includes our sub instance. Does it include our sub instance? Right, you just set i to be the length of x and j to be the length of y and then you get full x and y, right? What's the other requirement we need? Remember the wedding. Who do you invite you to your wedding? Your friend's friends, right? You need, um, you need that it's closed under the friend operation. You need for every sub-instance here, you have to make sure that you've invited their friends. So this is a generic sub-instance, right? Who are their friends? Well, 
maybe you delete the last of x, or you delete the last of y, or maybe you delete the last of both of them. Right? And all of these still are, this is a prefix of x and this is a prefix of y, so they're all, they're all invited. Does that make sense? Everybody follow what I'm saying here? And uh, also, you have to prove that everybody's kind of needed, and, and we sort of show that you know, all of these are needed. So this is our set of substances. Now, once you have your set of substances, right, we need a table which you have a box, in the, a square in the table for every substance. And so the best way of thinking about it is, is you need to give every index them. Right? What, what's the, you want to give this substance a nice small name. What's the clear name you give it? Right? It's identified by I and by J. Right? So what's your table going to look like? What's a table that's indexed by I and J? Right? The substance is its parameters by, by I and J, so we have our table parameterized by I and J. And, and so basically that's a two-dimensional table, or it's a matrix, right? Everybody kind of get that? So we have a two-dimensional table where the, the first index is between 0 and the length of x and between 0 and the length of y. And uh, so this is kind of our table here, right? Um, so let's think about how we're going to fill in this table now. So here, let's, let's figure out what's going on here. Uh, the original input, right? Suppose this is y and this is x, right? And so what's a particular instance here? Well, we take this, the first four characters of, uh, of x and the first six characters of y and in here, we want to say, what's the longest, longest subsequence of this and of this, right? And we don't actually want, put in here what the subsequence is. We put its length. So this is claiming that the longest subsequence of, of this and this happens to be of length 3. People get that? Right? And there, there it is. This is... Uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, that's the longest subsequence and it has length 3. Right? That's the cost of the subsequence. And the, and the bird's advice was, in this case, don't take the last of, of x. That's why we have this little arrow here, it's going to indicate, we'll see why it's an arrow. Right? It's don't take the last of x. Does that make sense? Um, and here it's it's take right. What's the for this the longest subsequence is is zero uh, one zero zero, and uh, and we took the last of both of them. So that's the bird's price. All right. All right. So people kind of understand this table. So now. You fi we filled out, this, suppose we filled out this table up to here and we now have to fill out the last square. Right? We're going to talk later about what order to fill in the table, but suppose you know, our instance, this is our instance there, it's clearly the last square we're going to fill in. Right? How do we fill that in? Well, we try all bird answers. The bird says, hey, uh, don't, the, last, the largest subsequence doesn't take this zero. Right? The bird says that. So what, ins what instance do we give our friend? Right, we delete this, and we give the friend this, and this whole thing. So where is that stored? That's stored here, right? So the, bird, the friend says the longest subsequence has length 5, right? What's our subsequence going to be? It's going to be the same. So it's going to be length... Uh, it's going to be the same. It's going to be 5. Um, and now we try uh, delete. She says, uh, we try a different bird answer. She says, delete this guy, the last of y. So what's the substance it's going to be? It's going to be uh, that square there. 
right? If we delete the last of y. And this friend says that the longest is of length 5, so what will our answer, our answer be? It will also be 5. Now the bird says, take both of them, right? So what's our sub-instance? We delete this, and we delete this, and uh, we check, hey, yeah, they're the same, we can take them both, right? So what are, what's our sub-instance? It's that one there, right? And again, the friend says the length's five, so what's our length? Six. Six, six. right? And now we've tried all bird answers, Right, we take the best of the best, and which is the what's the best? Is the six. Does that make sense? All right, let's back off. Let's suppose we are filling in this square here. Right, we do the same. We we try going up. We get a four. We our answer would be the same, which is which is the four. Right. We try coming over here. The sub instance is over here, so we try we our answer is the same. Right? Now we try coming up. Uh, she says, take, take the, the last in both cases. Can we do that? No. no? Right? We can't do that. So uh, we'll, you know, we'll say that's, that's wrong. And then what's the best answer? Four. It was the four. Does that make sense? So, This is, this is the code for filling in the box, right? Uh, in in uh, case one, we say we're not including the last x, and so we, we, came, we backed off on the x, and our cost was the same, right? In case two, it is when the, it's not the last y, so we take, remove the last y, we ask our friend, the way we ask your friend when we look it up in the table, right? When you look it up, in the, that's a friend solution. And what's our cost is the same as our friend's cost, right? And in the last case, uh, we first check to make sure that the last characters are the same, right? And if so, we, uh, we back off on the x and on the y. We ask our friend for the, the, op the length of the optimal solution. And ours is the optimal solution would be one longer, right? But we don't actually compute the optimal solution. We just write down its length. Does that make sense? So if you go back to the third thing for a second, wouldn't it be better just to check for the diagonal one to see if you can get the plus one? And if you can't, just keep the number the same and it doesn't matter because... Okay, hold that thought. Um, so here's a better solution. If you first check the diagonal, you first check that your, your last characters are the same. Right? Because if your last characters are the same, then I'll tell you, that's what you should always do. You don't have to ask any bird for anything. There's no reason not to take them. Right? So if the last characters are the same, then, uh, um, then your cost is simply one more than the diagonal up. And if, and, oops. And if the last characters are different, then you don't need this to do that third case. You just try uh, removing the last of x and the last of y. And so instead of three solutions, you only have two solutions. Good for seeing that. Everybody kind of good with this algorithm? What order? Everybody see how you fill in each square? So now what order do we fill in the table? Which direction? Um, <laughs> right, you want to do it so nobody waits. So what I like to think is when you're filling this square, who are your friends? They're your friends. Right, so you need to do it in order in which those guys are done already. Right, so what, what you could do it if you did it like this, right? then that would, those would be done, that would be done before you got here, right? Another option is you could go like this, right? Another option, you could go like this, right? You hit those and hit that. Could you go like this? No, because no, you would hit this one before you hit that one, right? So that's a, certainly a good option. Everybody see that? 
Um, so here we're looping over the seven is the values of i and the values of j. Uh, the base cases are, uh, this is a base case, right? Because um, here we have zero, if y is of length zero, then clearly the answer is zero. So you can fill in this using the base case. Um, so the base cases are um, all values of i when j is zero, all values of j when i is zero. Right? And, uh, and then this is just the, once you, ha you, know, once you have the, oops, where are we? Uh, the advice. If once you fill the table in once and you get the bird's advice, then, okay, we filled this entire table in. Now what do you do? Well, you just run the algorithm again. Right? I'm here. The arrow tells me what the bird's advice is. The bird's advice says, come up here. Take the last of both of them. Then the bird says, take the last of, right? Here you take this one and you take this one. Then you hear, the bird says, take them both. Take this one, take this one. Then you're up here, the bird says, take them both. You take this one and you take this one. And now we're up here. Oh, I guess it's the same. Now, once you're here, the bird says, don't take that one. Right? So you come up. And then the bird says, don't take that one. So you come over, and then you take all the rest. Except, I guess here, you don't take this last of I guess this last comes over here, because you don't take that one. Everybody got to follow that? All right. What is going up? What? What is going up? What is going left? Well, I guess the picture is that when you're going up, it's telling you to throw this guy away, right? And when you're coming over this way, it's telling you to throw that one away. And when you're going diagonal, the, the intuition is you're taking both of them. This picture, actually, I stole from Andy. It was from a test on uh, some things I steal from other people. <laughs> All right, any questions about longest common subsequence? Are you getting, a, are you guys understanding this? Can you do, you, I mean, at this point, you should start saying, hey, could I do this on an exam? No. All right, so uh, let's pretend we got an exam right now, right? And, and think about what you would answer for this next question. All right, so this, this could well be an exam question, right? Actually, this won't be an exam question because we're doing this one right now. But uh, we're, had we not done it, it could be an exam question. Okay. Math fact problem is a classic, right? In fact, you know, make sure you understand the math fact problem. Um, all right, so the ingredients are, you know, what's, what's an instance? We have a knapsack. That's why it's called the knapsack problem. And we know the volume of the knapsack, and we have a bunch of objects. And for each object, we know the volume of the object, and we know the price of the object. All right? And uh, you can think about it as you're going into the grocery store, and you're a robber. Or maybe you're going into somebody's house, and you're a robber, and your knapsack holds a certain amount, and you can put anything in the knapsack that fits. And what is your goal? Is to run away with as much profit as possible. All right, so a solution is any subset of these objects that fit in the knapsack. And by fit, we mean that the sum of their volumes is less than the volume of the knapsack. Right, sometimes this, they don't use volume here, but they use weight. You know, you're allowed a certain weight on the airplane. Right, uh, and then the, the cost of a solution is the total price of the things that you've taken. Right? So you asked at one point, what happens if you have two parameters and you're trying to balance them? I mean, this is sort of the classic, right? And we're going to see whether or not we have a good algorithm for this. Everybody get the problem? All right. Um, right, so the goal is to get as much in your knapsack as possible. All right, so now when you are... Uh, when, if this was your question on the exam, 
you know, what are you going to do? The first th thing you really want to do before you start writing garbage down <laughs> is you want to make sure you understand the questions, right? So what are the instances, right? Instances. I have a, usually you have a bunch of objects or you have a string or you have a something. What is an instance, right? The instance tells you the, the volume and the price of every object in the volume of the nut stack. Make sure you know what an instance is. Make sure you know what a solution is. Right? A solution is a subset of the objects. How do you know whether it's a valid solution? It fits, the, it fits in the NAF stack in terms of volume. What's the cost of a solution? Right? It's the sum of the prices that you've taken. Yeah, this is, if you take set, if S is the set of things you've taken, then the sum of their volumes it's less than or equal to the volume of the knapsack. And, and S is still the set of things you've taken. So if the sum of the prices of the things you've taken is, uh, is maximized. That's what, that's what you get to take home at the end of the day. All right, everybody got the problem? All right, so uh, one can first think, what about a greedy algorithm? Can we, can we have a greedy algorithm that works here? And uh, um, what would the greedy criteria be? That's, what's, what's the obvious thing? You can say the most valuable object. Does that seem like a good thing to do? You go in, you see something, why doesn't it work? It's like a test question. Yeah, have to wait. Yeah, <laughs> and very much, in fact, this is the same as a test question. Right, why doesn't it work? Well, is because this is the most valuable object, right? But it takes up a lot of space. <laughs> Don't you like my graphics? Right, it takes up too much space. Now you can't put anybody else in, right? That's what the greedy would do, but what's the optimal? The optimal is you take, you, you take the bear and the blocks and you're happy, right? So what's the obvious other one? Going for uh, the same as the test question again, it would be, uh, well, sm yeah, you, I, I guess I'm skipping that. The obvious the next one is you take the, the smallest and, and uh, it's not, it, it might not be worth anything. Another reasonable thing is to take, you want to get the most bang for your buck, right? This is price per volume. That's what really matters here, right? So you think, I'm going to go price per volume, and, uh, and, and which one has the most price per volume here? Right? It's, oh, yeah, so I guess this guy here has a, pr a price per volume. It's just a, li you know, it's a little small. So those ones have price per volume one. You take it. Now the problem is the mass stack's not big enough to take anybody else. Right? So you really, you should have taken the wagon. Everybody got that? So, so here's another question. What happens if you could take partial objects? Right? You could take part of a bear. You could cut the bear's <laughs> legs off, right? And shove it in the knapsack. What do you think then? Well you would take that and take a fraction. Like you take the wagon and then you take the fraction. Right? Well, the next valuable object is the bear, right? So if you could take part of the bear, then uh, this will give the optimal solution. Isn't that the most valuable stuff? Well, price 5 divided by 7 is less than 1, right? Your price per volume is, is less than 1. Here, the price per volume is 1. Here, the price per volume is 1. Right, so if you can imagine, I mean, the proof that this is optimal, um, actually, let me tell you right now, this has been on many exams, right? You need a greedy question, a fine greedy question, is proved that, uh, is that this is optimal, right? In fact, it might even be the test, is it on the sample questions? Yeah. Yeah. And so, right, and, and the intuition is that each piece, each little piece of the knapsack is, has its most, price for volume as it could have, right? And you filled up the net set. All right, that's optimal. Uh, and, right, and this, this is a problem that comes up often in, in when you're trying to solve problems. 
is that if you, if you relax, the, in, the if you have an integer problem, I need to take it or not take it, right? That's become, usually that's MP complete, where there's no good algorithm. If you relax the integer requirement that you can take a fraction of a solution, then you can do, you know, maybe greedy will work, and if not, something like linear programming will work, right? We did, we talked about linear programming before, you have a bunch of linear constraints and you're trying to optimize something. So if you relax to linear, to, to integer, to, to real numbers, then, then most of these things are solvable, right? But it's the integers that causes problems. All right, are we stuck? Are we going to move? The bear is getting his revenge. The bear. The bear says, you cut me in half, buddo. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so let's back up. Oh, we went way too far. I pushed it too many times, I guess, right? Do we move too far? All right. All right, good. All right, so, so now you want to think about uh, what your bird's gonna, question's going to be. You think, I have some instance, right? I have a bunch of objects, and the bird has some solution here. She knows what to optimally put in the, in the nest set, right? So we want to ask her a question. And the, usually the obvious question works. I mean, there's only so many questions you can ask her, right? So what's the obvious, what are the various things you can ask her? Can you ask her something like, what object that I take would allow me to take the most valuable uh, that's left? Like, if you take one thing, I take a certain amount of space, so how much space will I have left? with all the other objects. You're working too hard. She, she knows, she can, you're kind of getting the intuition of why this should be this, but you can just ask her a question. She's gonna, she doesn't have the reason, she's gonna tell you. Which one which, which take? You can ask, yeah, you can ask what should I take, right? And then how many answers are there? Right, all the various things, right? You could ask, uh, come on, come on, computer. So, um, right, you could ask the bird, should I take, what's the last object should I take, or what should I take? I mean, that's often, you want to ask something about the end, and then how many answers she might, might would you have to check, is one, you know, in answers. What would be a shorter question? Uh, should I take the last object? Exactly. Exactly. The number of answers here is in. Another question you can ask is, you could focus on the bear, right? These are ordered in some arbitrary order. You say, should I take that bear or not, right? Yes or no? So you ask her, should you take the bear? And uh, this computer is really going to annoy me. Um, so if she says, what's she going to say? She's going to say yes or no. Um, I have a question. I forget it too. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so, are we generally always going to have a yes or no kind of question to give the bird, or are there cases where we can't ask the yes or no questions? Um, well, yeah. The last one was was there were three answers or something, right? It was, wasn't quite a yes or no, okay. right? Um, and in the printing words, you had to say how many words do I put on the last, right? So. Anyway, it's, hopefully the computer will wake up. But if she says, um, no, don't take the bird, no, don't take the, uh, the bear, right? Then we need to give the friend a sub-instance, right? What sub-instance do you give the, fr the friend? Everything but the bear. Everything but the bear, right? And the friend then gives us an answer. And what's our answer? His answer. It's his answer. Good, everybody got that? Now, she might say, Take the bear, right? Then what do you do? You trust her. She says, take the bear. What do you do? Take you take the bear. What do you do with this bear? Put you put it in your bag. Exactly. That's why you have a bird that you trust. She says, take the bear. You just stick it in your bag, right? And now what do you ask your friend? Um, the same thing. The same thing. Less the bear. No. 
No, you give your friend a, a sub instance. Right, so you give them like knapsack but not the whole knapsack. Exactly. What objects do you give them? No, the remaining object. The remaining object. Exactly. But you need to give your friend an instance. The instance is the same instance excluding the bear. And the knapsack that you give him is the same knapsack minus the volume of the bear, because you've already put the bear in. Right? And then your friend gives you a solution, and what do you what's your solution? You stick the bear in his spot, that spot, right? You have a slightly you cheated your friend because your knapsack's actually slightly bigger, just big enough to stick the bear in. Right? And that's what we're going to do, assuming we can move forwards. Any, anybody want to fix this computer? Well, it could be the computer. It could be the batteries in this thing. Yeah, he says if people leave keys, you know, if the press keys are pressed, then the battery dies. Oh, nobody has lots of little batteries, do they? Big batteries. Anybody have big batteries? Whoops. All right, how much time do we have left? Eight minutes? All right, well, let's not worry too much. Let's, do you have a question? Yeah, yeah, so the first, I, I do think that the first step in designing this, this algorithm is to think about, pretend you have a bird, and think, you, pretend you have a friend, all right? So if you have a friend, the bird, you, you're only going to ask the bird a little question. You want to ask something about the end of the solution, and so you want to ask uh, but as few answers as possible. So the nice question is, this last object, do I take it or not? And in the end, we don't have a bird, so we're going to try them both, right? But if she says, don't take it, then you trust her, and you just ignore the, be the bear. And then you have to give your friend an instance. And what's required of the instance that gives you a friend? Well, your friend is a recursive guy, right? So you can give him anything that meets the precondition and is smaller, right? So what we're going to give him is the same objects minus the bear, and a knapsack of the same volume, right? And then by magic, by recursion, he gives you a solution. He, he gives you the optimal things to put in the knapsack, right? Uh, and then you, but that's, that's an optimal solution to his instance. You need an optimal solution to your instance. Well, what's the difference between your instance and his instance is the bear. But you didn't want the bear in there anyway, right? So you just, your, your solution is the same, right? Now, if, the, if the, the bird says, take the bear, then that's, that's where I like the intuition of trusting the bear. Because what do you, you, you think? What if she says, take the bear, what do I do? I put the bear in, right? So what do you give the friend? As you said, you, what we want to ask the friend is, what do, what's the rest of the solution? You want to say, okay, I know this is the bear. I want to ask the friend, what's the rest of the solution? What do I put in the rest of the knapsack? So I give the, the friend all the rest of the objects and the rest of the space of the knapsack. Right? So the, the friend gets n minus 1 objects and in the knapsack of volume, uh, the old volume minus the volume of the bear. And the friend gives you the solution, right, and then there's a little space for the bear that you put the bear back in, and that's your solution, right? And now, and so you take the bear. Now, you've tried to, if, if we didn't have a bird, you try them both, right? Now you have a solution, you have the best solution of all those solutions to your problem that contain a bear, and the best solution of all those solutions that don't contain a bear, and which one do you keep? Best of the best. The best of the best. Does that make sense? So that there is a recursive backtracking algorithm. It will give you the right answer. Right? You know, the base cases are when you have no objects or when your knapsack is empty. 
Right, there's one extra case I didn't tell you about. So suppose she says, take the bear, and the bear doesn't fit. Right? The bear's too big to go in your knapsack. Then you just be polite to her and say, no, that's that's that solution's no good, and you exclude that solution. You know, you give it value negative infinity or something. For these problems, is the loop invariant the same the we haven't gone wrong? It's not really a loop invariant. Because when you're doing recursive backtracking, it's a recursive algorithm, not an iterative algorithm. And when you're doing dynamic programming, you're filling in the table. So the loop invariant would be all the answers I filled in so far are right. Right? So it's the answer with your question is no. All right, so everybody get the recursive backtracking algorithm? So the next step is to say, what is the set of all substances that are ever going to rise? I need to turn it into a, a, oh, so the rec what's the running time of the recursive backtracking algorithm? Exponential. Exponential. That's always the answer. <laughs> Exponential. Right? So we want to say, what is the set of substances that ever arise? Right? So first, there's two parts to the, to the instance. There's what objects might come up and what volumes might come up. Right? So what objects might come up? Right? It, might you get objects 3 and 5 as a sub-instance? No. no. Why? Because it's, again, it's going to be a prefix. Right? If all you do is delete the last one, then it's always going to be a prefix. Does that make sense? So the sub-instance that you gave a friend will be some prefix of the objects. What about the knapsack? What, what volumes might come up? Right, you make the knapsack like a little smaller, right? How much smaller? I don't know, right? It could be very confusing what volumes come up. So you just will have to assume that all possible smaller volumes, right? So the set of sub instances is going to be indexed by two things. It's going to be indexed by uh, i and v prime, right? <laughs> Is that a funny v prime? <laughs> and what's this instance here? Is we have the objects one, two, three, up to up to object i, and we have a knapsack of volume v prime, right? And we want to know of these objects, what do we put in this knapsack of that has volume v prime to maximize our profits, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. There's a question. Um, you said that. One of the teddy bears is too big to put into the knapsack, but you're giving the little birdie the, the um, knapsack size, so why would you ever say so You try them both, and you check, and you say, hey, that's not something I tried. Okay. To reduce the number of sub-instances, could, could you do something like, say, if the backpack's volume is 5, throw out all the objects that are left that are whose volume is over than five? Yeah. Because they can't say Yeah, for sure. So for sure. Chop it down. For sure. For sure. All right, so everybody gets this. So what is our table going to look like? It's going to be a matrix again, right? We have two parameters. We have indexed by, by i over here, and we have indexed by v prime over here, right? And this entry right here says, we're considering the first i objects. We're considering a knapsack of volume v prime. Right? Does that make sense? And so if I'm trying to fill this in, what, what do I do? I say, I either take it or, I ask for, do I take it or not take it? What, what's it? Do I take or not take this object? Right? If she says, don't take it, right? Then I take the cost here and I copy it down. Right? Because my solution will be the same as, as my friend's solution. Right? <coughs> if she says, take it, then where's my friend? Left. Right? Because I remove this object, and then I make the next, the, this, if this is, this is V minus, V prime minus uh, VI. Right? V prime is my volume. VI is the volume of this object that we just put in the knapsack. So that's this volume here. Right? 
So I take my friend's answer, and what's my answer? It's this answer plus the price of object i, right? Right? Because I get to put the bear in, so I get I get the the cost of the bear extra. Does that make sense? So. I compare, then I've, I've calculated this one and this one, and I take the best of this versus this plus this, right? What's the best of this or this? And I put that in the, in the square. Does that make sense? And then what order you fill it in, you can fill it in this order again, right? Because you get this and this before you get this. That makes sense? So. What's the running time of this algorithm? They're always the same. It's the number. In fact, did we, did we skip this before? It's the number of sub-instances times number of bird answers. Right? So when we were doing, let's go back to longest common subsequence. What was the number of seven instances there? It was n times n, right? The length of x times the length of y. How many bird answers did you have? Three or two, depending on how you looked at it, right? So that's the running time, right? In this case, how many sub instances did you have? Right? It's the, the volume of the knapsack times n. And how many bird answers do you have? Two. Two. Right, everybody follow that? Now we have the, the million dollar question, which is always on the exam and everybody always gets wrong. Is this poly time? Let's look at the instance. Right, what's the, an instance is a bunch of bunch of objects, right? We here have n objects, and it's a volume, right? What's the size of this instance? How many bits does it take to write down this instance? Well, that's going to take you something times n, right? You have to write down all these objects. How many, how many bits does it take to write this down? Hmm? It's a value, right? Value. Log V. Right? So question is this is this exponential time or is it polynomial time? Well the end part is really good. Right? But this part here is exponential. Right? Does that make sense? If I wrote down here a uh, hundred objects, right? N was a hundred, and V was a hundred-digit number, right? Then the running time would be ten to the hundred times a hundred, right? This is it. The V is ten to the hundred. Does that make sense? So this is an exponential time algorithm. What? So why, what's, why is it better than recursive backtracking? Well, the previous algorithm, it's two to the n, right? right? So this not, this algorithm is good as as long as you're it's it's polynomial and n. It's only exponential and the values, right? So if all your values are small then this running time is good, right? It's only exponential in the values. Well, the, the recursive backtracking one, it's exponential in n, right? And uh, we call this uh, strongly, weakly. Uh, so this problem is actually NP-complete. There's no fast algorithm to solve an optic problem. But we call it uh, weakly NP-complete because it's only exponential in values and not in n. Right? So, what's the, 
we're probably running out of time now, but the, the bottom line is, is you know, you should understand this algorithm and you should understand why it's exponential time. So make sure you understand this algorithm and you make sure you understand why it's exponential time.